my exposure to the stealth genre was pretty much limited to the Metal Gear Solid series, and the odd stealth sequences dotted around action adventure and horror games. I always felt this missing piece of gaming experience, even though I hadn't played anything else. I knew that there was a mechanical and architectural relationship that I was looking for, which I was certain more stealth-centric titles would explore. I already played the same line of sight focused stealth segments more times than I can count, moving from grass patch to grass patch while an enemy's back was turned. And while that was mostly fine for the games I played, I wanted to see what else the stealth genre could achieve. More specifically, I wanted to know what it's like to look through the eyes of a burglar, and what could be more perfect for that than Thief. Looking Glass Studios released Thief The Dark Project in 1998, and Thief Gold about a year later, which was essentially a re-release of the first game with three additional levels and other modifications. This is the version I played, along with some mods on top to make the Steam version playable. Looking Glass also made System Shock, a game held up by critics as a breakthrough in the action-adventure genre, and they'll go on to do the same thing with Thief pushing the boundaries of another genre which, even after all these years, remains an essential title in stealth games. The game follows an independent thief named Garrett, who completes robbery jobs for money. Its setting is most easily described as medieval dark fantasy with industrial elements, which shapes an eerie world of unfamiliar creatures, pagan gods, and religious orders. Thief is a lot more fantastical than I expected. And after being introduced to zombies and the like early on in the game, I realised I was in for a surreal experience. The first couple missions are about stealing certain items and breaking people out of prisons, but the turning point begins when you're contracted by a woman named Victoria, on behalf of her client Constantine, and everything starts to get a lot weirder. Thief's ingenuity has not been lost since its release over 20 years ago with mechanics that took me by surprise due to how differently it made me approach stealth. The way it implements light and sound into the gameplay is at the core of this, and it really opens up the options for tackling the architectural puzzle of breaking and entering. Your visibility of course plays a huge part in stealth, and while line of sight is a factor of this, the level of light is also something else you'll have to observe, which is displayed for a light gem at the bottom of the screen. Garrett can remain completely undetectable if he stays in the shadows, but darkness doesn't only mark a preferable route for an area, it also affects the surreal aesthetic the game embraces you with. The stark contrast between dark and light areas, although not realistic, play into its strengths and style. This is something that is also used by the cutscenes. The dramatic shadows and silhouettes layered over each other and their backgrounds effortlessly produce a style that feels so unique to Thief. Traversing through the shadows is undeniably the best route you can take through a mission, but the game doesn't just supply you with a set path, you're able to create darkness thanks to water arrows. With these you can put out the flames of torches and fireplaces cutting out the light source and forming strings of shadows to safely slip through. Water arrows along with most of your other supplies are limited, so you can't just put out every single torch. Not to mention some lights will be electric. It'll be up to you to determine where you need a hiding spot. As well as looking for the optimal passage to your objective, you'll be listening for guards or other enemies that can cause a lot of trouble if they notice you. The sword fighting in this game is awkward, and enemies hit heavy, but most importantly, fights are loud. While you may be able to take on one enemy, being surrounded by multiple is basically just a premature vision of the mission failed screen. To make detection of enemies easier, the designers made sure you're able to hear others through a combination of footsteps, whistles, and occasional mutterings. 
they're almost never silent, so catching their presence isn't difficult at all. However, just as you're listening out for guards, they'll be listening out for you too. You'll be paying a lot of attention to your footsteps, which inevitably become louder the faster you move, but they also change depending on what material you're walking on. Metallic surfaces ring out your footsteps like an alarm, whereas carpets provide a comforting, muffled sound. This affects how you perceive your path for a space just as much as you'll be watching out for shadows, as you'll favour the softer, quieter surfaces when dealing with patrolled areas. The element of sound can be used to your advantage by throwing certain objects to divert an enemy's attention, giving you enough time to slip away or bonk them on the head with the beloved blackjack, a godlike club that will efficiently knock out any unsuspecting victim. Hearing approaching footsteps is tense enough, but the audio design of Thief often dissolves into very ominous ambience and whisperings. Without the context of the game, it honestly sounds like something from a horror title, which adds to the adrenaline of being somewhere you're not supposed to be. Just through light and sound, your relationship to the buildings of this virtual space is taken to another level. It made me analyse these interiors and exteriors in a way that I can use them to achieve my goal, as opposed to just having them be a backdrop. Another factor in heightening your connection to the structures of Thief is that there's no waypoint. You're only provided a map which does not show exact rooms, but rather larger areas. Sometimes the floor plans are outdated and cryptic, or you'll even find yourself in unknown areas. Your only assistance will be a compass, and some scribblings of important locations Garrett may note down. Most of the information you'll need for getting through a mission won't be provided by your map. It almost all comes down to your observation and response to what you'll find when you're in the midst of it. Meticulously planning your entry into a building isn't the only thing. You also need to think about how to get away from your crime. While not every mission requires you to escape, at least on normal difficulty, it's something you will need to think about especially for later levels. This creates the scenario of a real heist, forcing you to think one step ahead to pull off your robbery. It became obvious to me how reliant I had become on modern systems, waypoints, and detailed maps in games, but it felt great to have this convenience stripped away from me. I found myself paying more attention to my surroundings because it made everything feel more unknown. That unfamiliarity forged tension and that didn't just come from the fact I was in a new structure, but because I was in a new world. Constantine's mansion, in particular, wasn't just an ordinary building. Its innards were twisted in an Alice in Wonderland-type fashion. Strange forced perspectives and impossible rooms pulled me into the unfolding peculiarity of Garrett's story. But this unease provided by the irrational labyrinth added to the thrill, while also making me think, what have I gotten myself into? The tools provided to you are more about traversing buildings in a way that is as unconventional as possible. Using the front door is unspeakable. Rather than having a bunch of weapons to take enemies head on, your toolset will consist of items that will help you move through these environments in ways you're not supposed to. This will include rope arrows for scaling higher areas and lockpicks for getting through certain doors. Unlike the high-tech equipment of Hitman or Metal Gear Solid, Thief's options remain modest in comparison due to its medieval setting. Despite this, there is no lack of creativity when it comes to dealing with levels, and the fantasy world allows magical items like elemental arrows to sensibly exist. Stealth in horror games is more in relation to your pursuer, and the tools given are for dealing with them specifically. Third-person shooters use the environment as cover from a barrage of bullets, and other games may simply use buildings as backdrops. But architecture is at the heart of stealth in Thief, from its equipment to its puzzle solving. Jeff Mayno's A Burglar's Guide to the City was a book that, by its title alone, seemed appropriate for me to read while taking breaks from weaving between the shadows of surreal mansions and ancient cities. What this book taught me is that most burglaries aren't just kicking down doors and smashing through windows, there's instead a myriad of creative ways for entering a building. 
From tunneling underground to chipping away holes in walls, these crimes can be just as theatrical as those depicted in fiction. The book discusses the criminal career of George Leonidas Leslie, a bank robber who used his background as an architect to his advantage. His gang's process would involve obtaining blueprints of the buildings when possible, and frequently visiting the banks to scout the layout. Leslie would even construct rooms that resemble their targets, with models of the exact bank forts used implemented into them. With this, they would rehearse their robberies to perfection before the real deal. There's also the story of Jeffrey Allen Manchester, who broke into fast food chains, in particular McDonald's restaurants, by cutting out a hole in the roof of the building and dropping down through the ceiling. He would break in during the least staffed hours, hold up the workers and steal from the cash register, and would then go on to repeat this exact loop over and over again. The repetitive structure of chain stores from their layouts to their predictable routines would be the knowledge Jeffrey needed to successfully commit an estimated 40 robberies in less than two years. This would not be the end of his crimes, however, as he would then escape prison by hiding underneath a delivery truck that he memorised the schedule for. After that, he constructed his own hideout behind a bike display in a Toys R Us burrowing a hole into the wall and decorating his new abode with, I kid you not, Spider-Man posters and bedsheets. He would even use stolen baby monitors to watch security guards and workers to know exactly when his surroundings would be empty, learning their movements and subsequently his openings for when he could leave and enter his nest. The organised formation of daily operations is great for running a business, but for Jeffrey, it was a pattern he used to evade police for several months. The gameplay of Thief doesn't differ that much from the bizarre scenarios of Jeffrey and Leslie. Just as Leslie would acquire the blueprints for banks, Garrett will also procure any floor plans and maps he can find, with you studying these outlines and executing the robbery. Failed attempts at missions aren't the end, they're merely rehearsals until you succeed in perfecting your criminal choreography. Your observations and practice will result in the mastery of the layout, no less like Leslie's one-to-one -one recreations of his targets being used for heist practice. Watching your enemy's rhythms of movement to determine the opportune moment to strike or sneak past is no different to Jeffrey tracking the routines of Toys R Us workers through his baby monitors. In a lot of ways, Thief really does allow you to look through the eyes of a burglar. My choice of reading material ended up a lot more relevant than I thought for this video, as it includes a conversation with the level designer of Thief, Randy Smith, in which he says, You would think it was our job to design buildings that are hard to break into, but what we actually want to do is design buildings that will channel the movement of the player along different sequences. We introduce deliberate weak points or blind spots where a player can hide, and we make the guards or the architecture itself do weird things to open up more player opportunities. Unlike a real building that's built for the intended purpose of being a home, a bank, or a store, the environments of Thief were made to be broken into. That's not to say real buildings don't contain weaknesses and vulnerabilities that can be easily spotted by those looking to break into them, but creating a space meant for burglaries is challenging. Constructing an impenetrable fortress in a video game is easy. A designer can very much make it impossible for the player to ever step foot into the building. What's difficult is moulding a mission that feels like you're actually solving a puzzle, and that's ultimately the satisfaction behind the levels of Thief, and the stealth genre as a whole. With a mixture of pre-planning, practice, and the ability to respond to unexpected events, conquering the guards and structures while avoiding detection feels better than grabbing that expensive treasure at the end of it all. You'll creatively analyse buildings and use bizarre entry points and pathways through them. Instead of just using the front door, you'll steal some keys, go down a well, go through the basement, then make up your way to the top floor where the objective is located. Thief wasn't just a fresh experience with stealth, but also in how I looked at virtual architecture. In my role as a burglar, I had a natural preference for higher vantage points to better scout my surroundings. I felt nervous in well-lit corridors and heavily guarded basements, even more so when I was out of flash bombs. 
I looked out for carpets and soft surfaces, treating noisy ones like pools of lava. I searched for wooden beams I could pierce with rope arrows to reach new heights, and I took comfort in shrouding myself in darkness. My time with Thief was one I'll never forget. It grew my appreciation for level design in stealth games, and just how inventive the mechanics can be in relation to architecture. Thief's surreal fantasy setting is one that feels unlike any other, oozing with style and substance. There's just nothing quite like it. As well as this, A Burglar's Guide to the City was an eye-opening read filled with insightful deep dives into the world of breaking and entering, detailing some of the wackiest burglaries I've ever heard of. I highly recommend reading it for anyone who enjoyed this video, and with that I'll end with my favourite quote. Every building is a puzzle for a burglar to pick apart.